Hi everyone, how are you today? My name is uh, Delicia Alarcon. I'm class of 2014 from Fairfield University. And I'm going to talk to you all about my presentation I did at Fairfield University in October um, of 2019 regarding my Fulbright application adventure, as I like to call it. I have shared my PowerPoint presentation to go through this presentation with the PowerPoint as I did in my presentation with the students, I was invited by Kimberly, Kimberly Bear to do this presentation. She works with the Department of Fellowships and uh, in Academic Affairs to increase the students who apply to prestigious scholarships at um, different programs, including the Fulbright, Gilman, G Gates Cambridge, Truman, Rhodes, all the big fellowships that you may know. Uh, she supports students through that process along with other staff on campus. So I'm going to go through the PowerPoint that I did in that presentation. As you can see here, this is me with Fairfield representation at uh, Cristo Redentor in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro. And that was a fun day. My, that was when my mom came to visit. So it was a very special moment. So I'm going to go through the activity that I did with them. So if you're watching, please raise your hand or acknowledge yourself if you are a sophomore in college and about to go abroad. I think uh, I want to know who is watching. And if you're watching, please raise your hand in the comments and tell me who you are, what university you're from, if you're from Fairfield, uh, what year you are, if you're a sophomore. Raise your hand if you are a junior. And if you're about to go abroad, I would like to know who you are. Uh, make sure you comment in the comment section and let me know. Raise your hand if you are returning from abroad, if you've already gone, if you've already committed to a semester and you're coming back to the US and re-entering your campus community as well as the US. Raise your hand if you're a first year student or a freshman in college. Bold, I'm very proud of you if you're here. So make sure you're commenting and letting me know who you are. Raise your hand if you are a senior with senioritis. Yes, it's a very real to get senioritis in your senior year of college, even though you may have a million things to do, applying to colleges, applying to programs, graduate school, study abroad again, uh, working abroad, whatever your journey is, uh, you might still get senioritis because you're just burnt out and ready to get that piece of paper. I hear you. Raise your hand and you are, if you are a senior and applied for Fulbright in the previous 2020-2021 application cycle. If you did, congratulations. I'm proud of you. I want to know who you are and where you are in that process right now. We're in February, so around February, March, April, we find out uh, if you were accepted and uh, if you're in the final round for that process. Raise your hand if you are a Gilman alum. If you did the Benjamin A. Gilman uh, Fellowship, which is also part of the U.S. Department of State, raise your hand um, or drop your name and in the comments. I would like to see uh, or do, use the emoji, the raising hand emoji. That would be cool to see who you are. Or applied for it recently. If you're still in undergrad and you're applying for it, uh, let me know. I would really, really love to hear from you. And I want to say congratulations. You are ahead of the game. And let's give each other a round of applause for showing up today, uh, even if, if you came in person in October on campus in Fairfield, or if you're showing up today online to learn more about these great scholarships and opportunities that exist. Uh, give yourself a round of applause. You are engaged, you're willing to look up information, and you're willing to explore what's going on. So where are we going today in this presentation? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about who I am, who is Delicia, uh, journey through the various application processes. Yes, there are plural, many application processes that I went through, uh, not only Fulbright. Um, why did I choose Brazil and how did that fit into my journey and my career in that moment? Some key takeaways and then some question answer. I did that through uh, the live um, presentation. If you have any questions, please comment below 
and I will be sure to answer them and re get back to you regarding any questions you may have. So again, who is Delicia? I went to Fairfield University in Fairfield, Connecticut and graduated in 2014. I majored in psychology and Spanish with a minor in educational studies. Here you'll see campus as you uh, drive in. Uh, this is myself on graduation day with the Paraguayan flag. That's where my family is from and I have a, a deep connection to my roots in Paraguay. And then my professors who were very close to me during my experience and continue to be supporters in my journey and my experiences and my adventures and my ideas. Dr. Farrell, Dr. Primavera, and Dr. Johnson. So um, this was my little uh, community in psychology and Spanish. Again, my family here, this is at the Grand Canyon in Arizona, who are also very supportive of my dreams and my adventures and any idea that I may have, they're there to support me. My mom, my grandmother, who is also Delicia, my brother Mario, my dad Rafael, and this was us when we celebrated my mother's birthday in Las Vegas, Grand Canyon experience. So I wanted to showcase them because they form part of my experience with helping me pack, driving me to the airport, calling me and supporting me in my abroad experiences, making sure that my um, bank account is working when I'm abroad, uh, troubleshooting any issues I may have health-wise, financial, they are there to support me. So I wanted to give them a shout out because to make these experiences happen, you do need some support. So in my undergraduate experience, one of the first um, study abroad experiences I had, apart from living in Paraguay when I was younger, I decided to study abroad in Brisbane, Australia. Here you see my, me with my kangaroo friend uh, in Brisbane, in Queensland, where I focused mainly on my psychology program and my psychology courses and did an internship while there. And then I d went to Sevilla in Spain for the spring semester, which is when I applied for the Gilman Scholarship. So I actually applied in the fall while I was in Australia and received it for my spring semester going to Spain. And that was an, a great support and help financially to receive that scholarship to be able to go abroad for a whole year. So what is the Benjamin A. Gilman Scholarship? This is straight from the website. I'm going to link the website down, down below in the comments if you want to do more research on it. It's the U.S. Department of State's International Scholarship Program, which enables students of limited financial means to study or intern abroad. So providing them with skills critical to our national security and economic prosperity. It is run through the Institute of International Education, and it started in 2001. So this is if you are a student who has a Pell Grant and uh, that is how you will be, will be eligible and also studying a critical language according to the Gilman. So it's important to research their website to see what is going on. What do they define as critical language and what are the other um, different areas of uh, requirements that they have. So in my senior year, uh, before I go into that, actually, um, Kimberly asked me to talk about my experiences in undergrad, um, applying to different fellowships and different scholarships. And one of those is the Gilman, which I did abroad, thanks to uh, my peer group support at Project Excel, who, which is a trio student support program that supports first generation students with um, and, if, and if they have uh, the Pell Grant or limited resources uh, to apply for this scholarship. Uh, Carrie Rivera, who is the director, and she was my uh, guide, uh, academic counselor during my time at Fairfield, she uh, presented this award to me and really pushed me to apply. And in, in all honesty, in my freshman year or sophomore year, I didn't really listen. I didn't really put much work into it until I realized, oh, I need money to go abroad. I need all these things. So I really put it um, as a priority when I was actually going abroad. And thanks to them supporting me and showing me all these different supports and resources, I, was, I applied for it and ultimately received it. 
So uh, similar to that experience in my senior year, uh, again, Carrie Rivera approached me to discuss the Davis Jackson Scholarship uh, with, uh, doc with Mary Frances, Dr. Uh, Mary Frances Malone, who's no longer at Fairfield. She retired. Uh, she's doing amazing other work. I miss her and I missed her on campus. However, uh, she was instrumental in my senior year. She asked for uh, some staff members to give her names of students who might be able to apply for this. So Carrie approached me and said, do you want to do the Davis Jackson? And I said, sure, why not? I love studying abroad. I would love to go abroad again. And why not London? Why not um, the, uh, the UK and getting a master's degree? So I really only had three weeks to turn it around. Uh, this was a really big team effort between Dr. Malone, Dr. Janie Leatherman, Kim Baer, Carrie Rivera, my friend Emma, who were uh, my core team of support in editing my essays and really pushing me to apply and continue with the process. Because remember, I was a senior, uh, first semester senior, taking six classes, working two jobs, and really trying to just make it through my senior year. And also applying to jobs and different scholarships for the future, right? So it was a very stressful time, but also exciting because I was able to write these essays. There were three long essays, uh, but really pushed me to think about why I wanted this scholarship, why I wanted to go abroad, why I needed to be abroad. And so there were many parts to the application. There were three essays, the transcripts, I needed a passport picture, I needed to hand fill out these forms, I needed to FedEx the application. It was a little antiquated because it wasn't online, um, like the Fulbright, for example. However, there were many, many parts and each part was very important and it needed to be crystal clear why I wanted it and uh, crystal clear and very professionally done. So I edited the essays um, numerous times. And I think what I want to highlight here is the Fairfield community that came together to support me in this. And especially Dr. Janie Leatherman and uh, Mary Frances Malone, they would edit my essays on their way to conferences on the train um, in New York, to New York City, to Washington, D.C. At whatever time I sent them the essays, they were ready to edit it and return it back to me so I can continue editing it. Carrie Rivera, again, the director of Project Excel, really stayed with me in, on campus until 9 p.m. editing these essays and brainstorming and talking about this and really being a support system uh, through the whole process. So I'm so grateful for them and highlighting on the Fairfield community and how if you show up for these applications and you do the work, they're also they will also show up and do the work for you. And I know there's other professors like Dr. Crawford, um, Dr. Williams, who's no longer on campus, but during those times they were, they are also available to support students. Um, like I said, I worked, I had six classes, I worked two jobs, and it was the first semester of my senior year. So remember, I'm readjusting also to campus life in the US, so I'm re-entering U.S. Uh, culture after being abroad for one year and trying to figure out my life next step. So all of this is happening in addition to editing this essay. So you're not alone if you're a senior and you're working towards your goals, but also feeling a little overwhelmed. I know, I know that feeling. So after all that work, I didn't get the Davis Jackson scholarship. I I was, I guess, rejected um, would be the right word, but I took it as a learning opportunity and as a learning curve to really, okay, even though I didn't get it and I didn't go to London after I graduated, I still had three solid essays written and really ripped apart by everyone and in a good way, right, um, to learn from that. And those essays really helped me for my next couple of applications, and I'm going to talk a little bit why. So again, I'm in on the quest of going back abroad. That's always in the back of my mind, no matter what job opportunity I'm in. So after graduation, I did Teach for America and taught Spanish in South Carolina. So I kind of went study abroad in the U.S., but not really um, back abroad abroad. So I share that because you may have one idea, but life is going to 
push you in another direction. And being a Spanish teacher in South Carolina taught me a lot about myself, taught me a lot about students, about student engagement, about the real work that needs to be done for educational equity. There's a lot to be done. And I think without my experiences in South Carolina or with Head Start at Fairfield, I wouldn't really have seen those uh, truths and those realities because that just wasn't my lived experience growing up in Bridgewater, New Jersey or in Paraguay. So in 2015, I decided that I wanted to apply for the Schwartzman's Fellowship, which is also through, uh, administered through the Department of State and the International Education um, Bureau through the Schwartzman Endowment. So the Schwartzman um, who, he is a very wealthy uh, philanthropist and business owner. I think he owns Brookstone. Don't quote me, I will put all the information down, down below. Um, and so he started this fellowship and I learned about it and realized, okay, I want to apply for this. So in 2015 was the opening year of it. And I said, why not? I want to go abroad again. I have not been to Asia. I have not studied abroad in Asia. I don't know Mandarin, but it's not a requirement to know Mandarin. They would give you an accelerated course if you were offered this fellowship. So I applied. And again, I was reminded of the true power of the Fairfield community. The relationships you build during your time here carry weight even when you graduate. So I had graduated the year before and I said, I want to apply for this. Can Fairfield support me? And the answer is yes. I, again, did the work. I, sh I showed up and then I would email my mentors and the people who had supported me through the Davis Jackson to support me again with this. I said, hey, I want to apply for this. Can you help me? And their answer was yes. And this also, this application also had many, many parts. You had to film a video. Mary Frances uh, and other people on campus helped me film this at the studio on campus. And they helped me edit the video and they sent it to me in a YouTube link ready to go. I didn't have to do anything. And thank you, thank you, thank you for that. And again, they helped me edit the essays. They wrote reference letters. I needed transcripts. And again, obviously submit the application on time. And I also met with a Jesuit on campus to help me, Father Fahey, I think his name was, uh, to edit the essays. He is amazing as well. He didn't know me as a student, but he was willing to open his doors to help me edit this essay and really, really crystallize them. And again, I applied. I threw all my uh, ducks, I guess, into the ocean to kind of figure out if this is the next right step. Unfortunately, I also did not receive this scholarship and this fellowship, but what I learned from that experience again is that I was able to use my Davis Jackson essay into the Schwartzman essay. They're very similar, had to tweak it a little bit, uh, but with each process, the essays were 20 times better, and I also had grown up a little bit more, so everything was, I think, progressing and uh, getting better with my writing and, and sticking with it. So before Fulbright, like I mentioned, I did Teach for America as a Spanish teacher in South Carolina. I then worked at the University of Scranton and then at Fairfield University as a Project Excel academic counselor. So I kind of went back to my roots and worked on campus for about a year. And I really, uh, continued to support my students who wanted to apply and study abroad and encourage them if they thought they couldn't do it because of financial reasons or for their own, um, they just felt they couldn't do it. I would try to motivate them and encourage them to, do, to apply. You never know what's going to happen, right? You might get rejected, but you also worked on those essays and you really got through those essays and you're, le you're also learning through that process, even though writing essays is tough. It's really tough. And on campus at Fairfield, for example, there is the writing center and there are a lot of people willing to help. And I'm sure other institutions have departments dedicated to students applying to these fellowships. So before I talk about my Fulbright experience, I, want, I have a picture here of the actual book that I went to 
a seminar. So 2011, 2012, I think my sophomore year. Uh, so let's go back all the way there to 2011, 2012. I was sitting in one of these seats that the students were, are sitting uh, when I did this presentation in October. If you're watching online through YouTube or the website, um, I was sitting in one of those seats listening to Fairfield peers talking about their Fulbright experiences. So in that year, students went to Ireland, Jordan, and uh, Thailand. So three girls or three young women who went abroad and they were telling their, me their stories about Fulbright. And I had picked up the student uh, program book in that time they gave us these books. I don't know who gave it to us. I don't know what department, I don't remember, but I still have that book. And I recently found it this summer going through boxes um, from undergrad and I saved it. And the ironic thing is that when I opened it that day that I found it, it opened up to the Brazil page. And in that Brazil e page, it's, I had circled English teaching assistantship and I also circled the, or wrote down the year that I maybe would think of going. And the year was uh, 2018. So I share that because that's six years from 2012, right? So I guess I was thinking six years in advance of like, oh, I want to go to law school. I want to do this and I want to do that. But I guess I didn't think much of it. I closed the book and I put it away in my, fold, in my uh, drawer in undergrad. And then it came into a box and it moved with me. And I found it this summer, 2019. So. I say all of this because in 2017, I decided to apply for the Fulbright while working at Fairfield because I felt like it was a, a good transition from the master's program that I started in American studies into um, applying for the Fulbright. So I've had four years of revisions, reflections, and readiness and preparedness. I had edited my essays four years now, right? Starting with Davis Jackson, Schwartzman, and now Fulbright. So the opportunity presented itself and I applied. I went for it. I said, okay, it's now or never. So what is the Fulbright? If you're not familiar with it, it's a student program through the US Department of State. This is directly from their website. I'm gonna link it below as well. And it talks and it gives you the types of awards, the student programs, the eligibility, all of the benefits, there's videos and tutorials. The website tells you exactly what you need to do, exactly what uh, you need, right? So again, Fulbright, this is straight from the website. In 1945, Senator um, J. Williams Fulbright introduced the bill to the U.S. Congress that would use, the promo they would use this, uh, these funds for the promotion of international good will through the exchange of students in the fields of education, culture, and science. So his motto is the exchange of ideas, culture, and teachings through all of these student programs. So it could be a grant, a research grant, or the English teaching assistantship for student programs. And I'm going to focus on those because those are the programs that I was interested in and wanted to apply to. There's a million other for post-grad, for um, not really a million, but there's a lot more for PhD students, uh, professors, and postdoc. So if you're interested in that, please check their website. So I had decided to apply and I chose Brazil because I was doing the American Studies um, master's program and the research that I was doing about Latinidad and the intersections of identity through uh, individuals who grow up in the United States but have Latin American heritage. And where does Brazil fit into that narrative? Because they don't speak Spanish, they speak Portuguese. And how do these intersections of identity play a role in our representation in the US? So the, those are my areas of studies and research. So I wanted to really go to Brazil to immerse myself in the language to learn Portuguese and also understand that cultural nuance that exists. Because there, some Brazilians don't identify as Latin American because of the greater majority speaking Spanish and some do. So those nuances and intersectionality are what interested me to go to Brazil. And I wanted to do it through the lens of teaching in an English teaching assistantship role versus research because I wanted to be in the classroom with students and learning from them. So. I got the Fulbright, 
I made it to Brazil. Can you believe it? I didn't believe it either after I applied to other scholarships and didn't get it. So here's um, a, a picture of me representing Fairfield again uh, with the Fulbright Grant poster. And this is my team, Mina Shadais, uh, where we all were in different parts of Mina Shadais, which is kind of like the Texas of Brazil. So one thing that's very important that stuck with me through orientation is that you are an extension or an arm of the U.S. Department of State and Diplomacy, one of the senior um, foreign service officers said that and really stuck with me because it made me realize, wow, we are an extension of diplomacy and whoever connects with us and sees us, we are representing the United States as a country, no matter what our political views are, no matter how we feel about presidents um, in the past, in the present or the future, or what our policies are happening. We are representing the United States and as a first generation Latina, it's important for me to represent the US as that, as who I am. My parents are from Paraguay, they immigrated to the United States in the 80s, and my lived experiences is different from someone who maybe grew up in Texas. I grew up in New Jersey. So bringing those diverse experiences abroad in the US to demystify what is the American person was very important to me. Um, that's why I wanted to apply for Fulbright. And also something important if you're thinking of applying, Fulbright is not study abroad, and study abroad is not Fulbright. You are not going abroad to take courses and just be a student. You are representing the United States, and it's a very serious matter in terms of who you are and what you're doing and who you're representing. Yes, you have to find a balance with who you are and who you are as a person, but also understanding what umbrella you are under while you're abroad. So I'm in Brazil. I was placed in Lavras, Minas Gerais, which is very interior, rural community. I was at Universidade Federal de Lavras. And as you can see in Brazil, I am also butter. Um, and these are some of the students that I worked with and connected with while I was there. In Belo Horizonte, uh, we did a Education USA uh, presentation and program. We supported the Consul General and the Embassy with promoting Education USA, which supports students with their experience to want to study in the US. We're writing essays, picking what university, and really forming part of uh, that community and learning from them and perhaps learning if I, if I wanted to be part of the Foreign Service uh, Officer uh, community and apply for those jobs or work in the embassy, all good options um, through Fulbright. So here are some pictures of my experience. This is uh, Praça do Papa. This is in Mercado Central with all the cheese for Minas Gerais. This is one of my favorite architectural uh, churches, um, San Francisco. Um, and it's in by Mineral, which is the famous uh, football stadium in Belo Horizonte. So also in Brazil, I was able to do some trips. This is my mom and my brother came to visit me in Rio de Janeiro, as well as my friend Amanda. She came to visit me. We went to the Lanchois Maranhenses, the sand dunes and the Lagoas, and obviously Rio iconic Cidade Maravilhosa. And we had our mid-year seminar in Salvador, Bahia. So I want to talk a little bit about essay writing tips now for the Fulbright. And this also applies to a study abroad in general where you want to apply. So writing the essay is an exercise in getting really clear on your why. Why do you want to even go to X country? Why did I even want to go to Brazil? Why? Like, why Spain? Why Asia? Why uh, China, Beijing, uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, or Africa and the Gambia? Why any of these countries? And why this particular program? How does this particular program fit into your greater narrative of your career and your experience? And you have to do that reflection process. We can support you as in 
mentors, advisors, academic coaches can ask you questions and support you through that. But ultimately, you are sitting at your computer or your desk writing this essay. And it has to really be born of your inner experience and your soul, really, or your inner work of why you want to go there. Why this program? And why does it fit into your career choices or your next steps? For me, Fulbright really fit into my next career choice because I want to incorporate the experiences and the um, field work um, observations into my research and really provided me with the opportunity to have firsthand knowledge of the language, but also cultural experiences with people in Brazil. And then at the end of your essay, the reader should not say, so what? Why do you want to go? Why this language? Why this program? In reference to your points and why you should get the scholarship, right? If at the end of the essay you read it and it says, and someone says, so what? Then maybe we have to rework it and go back to that essay, go back to the drawing board, because they really shouldn't be saying, so what? So again, my final Fulbright thoughts, if you're thinking of applying for the Fulbright grant, take these with a grain of salt, whatever works for you, take it, leave the rest. This is my, based on my experience, this is no way affiliated with the Fulbright program or the Fulbright grant or the U.S. Department of State. These are Delicia Alarcon experience um, points and take them with a grain of salt. And if you have follow-up questions, please contact me. I'll leave all my contact information in the comments and I can expand on it. So Fulbright is not study abroad and study abroad is not Fulbright. Say it again, read it again. Fulbright is not study abroad and study abroad is not Fulbright. You're not there to take classes. I mean, you can take classes, absolutely, but that's an addition to what your work is there. You're an intercultural exchange diplomat in residence almost because you are representing the United States and our value system through this program. And Fulbright is inherently a hierarchical institution, much like any institution of higher learning. Though there is excellence, there is still room for change and growth. And I say that based on my experiences and um, it's the truth in terms of any institution can always grow and learn. Uh, we're always learning and growing. So my also, my also, or my uh, feedback also, um, if you apply to Fulbright and then get it, is be a conscious Fulbrighter in your own Fulbright experience. You are not there to change their culture to match the U.S. You are there to learn, to grow, and understand their cultural nuances. We're not going in to a country to change them, to provide um, the end all be all knowledge. We are there to learn from them. We are there to be a receiver of their knowledge and their cultural nuances. We are there to learn, to listen, and to really have open ears and eyes and observe as much as we can to, to bridge a gap between the United States and this country and the world ultimately. We're not there to be this like overarching uh, savior. So really be a conscious Fulbrighter and think about that. Um, so some reflections from my own personal experiences. Uh, from my journal entry from March 26, 2018, this is about a month into the program. There are tough days like all adjustment processes. However, it is an exercise in finding joy in the small wins of the day. That I wrote that through my experiences in Fulbright, but can be translated anywhere, really. If you're moving to another state, another city, another country, if you're uh, connecting with new people, if you're uh, transferring colleges or you're going abroad or you're applying for a new job, this could apply to anyone, really, but I learned it through my experience in Fulbright. And my good mentor, Anita, who works at Fairfield, she said to me before I left, make a friend before you need a friend, uh, which has really carried a long way. Build relationships with everyone, with the person in the Mercado Central who sells you your cheese. Be it, make friends. She might be a resource one day or a support one day with 
the make a friend with the different professors outside of your uh, English language department and really connect with people, I think is the biggest takeaway from being abroad. And of course, the best part of any Fulbright or abroad experience is making friends. So I have a lot of local friends through Fulbright, but also local Brazilians that are close, close friends that I still talk to today. So key takeaways to conclude, it does take time to write these essays and apply. So start early, really think about it and reflect about it. If you have a nudge to look on the website, follow that nudge. If you have an idea, write it down. It might, it might turn into an essay, it might not, but write it down, you never know. Uh, for me, particularly since I'm from Fairfield University in that community, show up and Fairfield will support you. I think by showing up, you are, need to be prepared with writing your essays, talking to your professors, building those relationships early on, starting freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, senior year, and, and beyond. They are still going to be support systems after you graduate. And if you're at another institution, I think the same applies for all students, no matter where you are. And the power of editing and editing again and editing again. You just have to get at it, not only grammar and verb tenses and uh, transitional words, but the, the cohesiveness and the nuance. Each word matters and word count matters. We have a limit of how many words we can use. So really focus on that and be concise and get to the point and really show your why. And be one with your why. Love your why, love it go to sleep with it and really think about it and really um, connect with why does this experience matter to me? Why should I do this? Why does it matter in the grand scheme of life? Why does it matter for one year, two years, three years from now? Uh, really connect to that and it's going to shine through in your essay. So stay in touch with me, um, everyone. You can email me at delicia.alarcon at fulbright.org. You can check out my blog, www.delitheexplorer.com. Follow me on social media at Delhi Lingo or Delhi the Explorer. Subscribe at, to Delhi Lingo. I am starting a community with um, students who I can academically um, advise them or coach them through this application process. If you want support and would like to connect with me, please go to the website. Uh, connect with you about any um, academic coaching you may need and stay in touch. I hope this was supportive and helpful and you learned something. If you have any questions, comment on below or email me and or set up a call with me and we can chat and connect about where you're at. If you feel super overwhelmed, that's okay. Uh, I did too. So really process and think about where you want to be and what you want to do with study abroad. So again, I did a Q&A session with the students at this presentation. Since this is virtual and online, drop your comments and questions below. And we can connect via YouTube, social media, wherever. I will leave this up one more time uh, for you to connect with me. Those, that's my email address, my blog, my website to connect with what services I provide for academic coaching and advising. Subscribe to Delhi Lingo for content relating essay tips, a Fulbright Gilman resume cover letter, how to uh, apply to colleges in the US as an international student, all of the above. Great content is coming your way. So make sure you subscribe and email me and stay connected. Make sure you drop your comments below. It was so good to connect with everyone. I hope you take something away from this uh, session regarding Fulbright, Gilman, and all the um, scholarships that I applied to, got rejected, but then I got some. So uh, stay positive and you can do it. <laughs>